Um, so I just spent about twenty-five thousand oh, dollars to look wow. at a piece, a piece of wood. Of wood. Uh, so yeah, you asked me, do I get excited? Well, no, I don't get excited. Do you get scared that they might want their stuff back? Well, I try and stay pretty much with it. I, I've never. No, I'm on about the aliens. Oh, I didn't understand it. Well, do you get scared that they might want to come and take their transmitters they want back, their implants back? Oh, well, if they want to come uh, take them back, they certainly have an advanced technology over we have. They wouldn't even have to appear to me. They could just take them and all be gone. He said that he'd already... Downstairs in the conference room, a British woman called Anne Andrews is telling the 500-strong audience about her son Jason. She says as soon as Jason was old enough to speak, he'd tell her that aliens would take him to their spaceship and make him a psychic healer. And he said, I've been around for a long, long time. He said, I've been here for many thousands of years. After some initial skepticism and much crying, Anne now believes Jason's story and has written a number of books about him, including Jason, My Indigo Son. Um, he said, I've been incarnated on this planet, I've been incarnated on many other planets throughout our universe and beyond. Um, he said a lot of people... She reminded me a lot of my mum. Happiness is surface night. Mum was a tarot card reader and in the shelf of books just outside her room there would be the world's mysteries Alf Steeman's witchcraft she used to have people around read the tarot cards, read the palms would talk about spirits, would talk about ghosts, would talk about the other side and I was that scared that I never talked to my mum about it and just lived in fear of all this kind of stuff and, you know, I want to find out why things that go bump in the night made me scared. Anne Andrews says her son Jason was an indigo child, and I once actually went to a meeting of indigo children. Basically, what happened is the diagnoses of attention deficit disorder have shot up. I think, on average, two kids in every classroom in America have been diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and are on Ritalin, which is obviously a really traumatic thing to happen to a family. And some of those parents, especially if they're slightly new agey anyway, have begun to decide that their kids aren't suffering from ADHD. What they are are highly evolved indigo children who've been sent down to Earth to heal the planet. And they have meetings, they have indigo meetings. Is it kind of, I can imagine that it would get a bit pageanty? Well, well, my I, child yeah. moves things with his mind. Well, my Shut child up. can access the fourth dimension, so <laughs> trumped. Well, I went to an indigo meeting once, and what they did was they blindfolded half the kids and told the other half to guide them across the room using telepathy. Um, <laughs> and, and I hate to say this, they but they were bumping into pillars and falling over <laughs> chairs. And, oh. I know, oh, and it, was, it really broke my heart to see it. Anyway, Anne Andrews yes, believes her son Jason to be an indigo child. With all of this stuff, whatever Anne Andrews has got to say, is kind of, well, if you're saying it, I have no reason to not believe you up until there's evidence that you shouldn't. Yeah. For me, it's, why would you lie? Back in the conference room, Anne Andrews is showing the crowd some very blurry photographs she's taken of UFOs. She says the aliens routinely take Jason away for indigo training aboard spaceships and she sometimes manages to photograph it happening. But the pictures never come out well because she's only got a disposable camera. When it's time for the Q&A, Robbie's friend Brandon walks to the front. Hello. Hello. Um, just wanted to ask, why don't you buy a better camera? <laughs> because I am absolutely useless with anything technological. Have you ever had any sort of psychiatric evaluation or presented yourself for that? <laughs> no, I haven't. I'd like to think that I'm all there, but I think that there's quite a few of us out there that have these experiences, so maybe we're all crazy. <laughs> Last night, Rob said to me that he didn't want to hear any debunking, and then he brings along to the convention yeah. the kind of Hitler of debunking. Well, thank you very much. I've been called the Hitler of many things, never the Hitler of debunking. Well, I don't know. There's two sides to Rob in that respect, aren't there? I think there's a side of him that wants to go along with it, but there's also a very sarcastic, sceptical side to him, which I'd like to think is the real side. My toes curled up the moment he walked towards the stage 
and I think questioning somebody's sanity when this is happening to them is perfectly acceptable. Mm -hmm. I question my own. Yeah. I'll go and say hello to that lady. Anne Andrews is sitting at the signing table. She's signing copies of her books, including Jason, My Indigo Son, Raising a Multidimensional Star Child in a Changing World. Robbie gets one signed. Hi, darling. I'm Rob. Hello, Rob. Pleased to meet you. Um, are you selling books? What is it that Jason said when he was a child that started all of this for you? Well, he called them at the time. Little men would come in my room and they would make me float with them to a hospital, which he thought a ship was a hospital place. Would they be three foot, four foot? He said there would be about three or four of these little beings, about like two and a half, three feet tall. Mm -hmm. But he said there was always a taller one, taller grey being with them. Of course, now he understands that, that the smaller ones are just like the drones, drones. that do their bidding. But he said the taller one was always in charge. Did he feel uh, safe with them or not? No, at first he was absolutely terrified because it went against everything that we brought him up to believe in. But then he realised that they're actually awakening him to the truth of who he is. Can I ask you, do you, because I do a lot, question my sanity, as regards to this kind of stuff, do you still sometimes go, do you know what, have I gone mental? Oh, all the time, yeah. You know, you look towards the rational and you go over everything in your mind and you think, is there a rational explanation? And of course, nine times out of ten, you can't come up with one. We always say, well, you know, you either laugh or you cry, you know, and we've done so much crying over all this stuff. And when did you come to terms with it? How long has it been since um, you said we believe you, Jason? Yeah, I, I suppose even when we said to him that we believed him, I, I don't think we 100% believed him, but we believed that he believed it. And of course, word got around in the small village where he lived, it got very, very nasty for him. Mm, so, no, I, I you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, that, pretty awful, it? yeah. What is it that he encounters from people? In England particularly, people are really, really spiteful at times. They will ridicule, they'll poke fun, they'll call things out to him across the road and, oh, you know, mental boy and all this. It's just really, really nasty. I mean, he's actually even lost a job over this stuff. If anybody had compassion, mm. even if this was all made up, which I don't believe, by the way, no, just, oh, just no, as no. an aside, yeah, but, thank you. you know, compassion should be shown anyway. It should be. Either which way. It should be, yes. Well, thank you, Anne. You know, you look very much like Robbie Williams. I've, I am Robbie Williams. I, I thought so. I, I, didn't, I didn't like to... I wasn't sure and I didn't want to sound stupid. <laughs> That's all right. Can I just say that I'm a big fan of yours? Anyway? Oh, bless you. So, Thanks, yeah. darling. And, and please send him my best. Of course I will. Cause he'll and be, maybe he'll we'll have so... a chat one day. Oh, I'm sure he'd love that. He'd be so thrilled to know. When did this kind of social shunning happen? What, what age was he? I suppose it's when the first book came out, which is when he was about 14. He lost all his friends at school, nobody wanted to know him. He was actually even suspended, well eventually expelled from school because the headmaster was just so, I don't want this sort of thing in my school. It must have been a horrible time for you. It was, it was. I and mean, an awful time for him. Uh, it was terrible. It's just so sad to hear mm -hmm. that that happens but I understand that it does because yeah. you know it's happened to me I've had the same kind of thing yeah. I think joining take that was like leaving on a spaceship really <laughs> yeah and coming back and all your friends yeah. going right uh, it's weird now yeah. so I understand a little bit yes but uh, please send him my best and I it's lovely do. lovely I to talk do. to you Time oh, to drop me a line if you want yeah oh that that would be lovely uh, that's co.uk okay yeah uh, yeah and uh, there you go Robbie and Anne swap email addresses and Robbie promises to go to her next talk next weekend in Pasadena.